Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Gormithic Philip Blake who is going to be coming to the game as an advanced token wheel character. Now Philip Blake and I'm going to do Philip like air quotes I'm actually doing it with my hands right now. Philip Blake is effectively a new character or not a new character it depends how you want to look at things. He does become the governor but I'm not sure if he's actually Philip Blake or not, because if you know the background story on the character, it could be that he took the spot of his brother or something. I know there's people who know much better details on the actual storyline. Feel free to leave them in the comments down below. But yeah, it's very interesting here when it comes to the kind of background story in this character. He is fully armed Philip Blake and full, like got all his eyeballers as well. On the left hand side he's reminding me a lot of the Christmas Grinch for some reason. I'm not sure why. It's the moustache I think and I don't know. It look it looks a lot like that. On the left hand side we can see that there is a kind of sneak peek at potentially another character that could be coming to the game and it's interesting because the governor or Philip Blake sorry here is going to be part of a brand new allegiance as well. If we look at the stats at level 1440 limit break 3 he has got 35,110 attack, 29,843 defense, and 22,822 HP. He is going to be an alert character, of course. Going to be of the control role, gold mythic, and the brand new allegiance is called the Lone Walls. And they have a really nice looking icon. Now, first of all, we are going to be checking out Philip Blake's Adrenaline Rush, and it is called Death Sentence. It has got a 66 AP cost. And it's deal 500% damage to an enemy, plus 500% damage if that enemy has crosshairs. If the enemy does not have crosshairs, the enemy gets crosshairs for three turns. So potential boosted damage. This can't crit. It will just be flat damage. This can be beneficial. This can also be problematic. That weapons are not going to be an issue when it actually comes to, you know, Philip Blake actually doing an attack. But he won't be able to hit as hard. But you want to take that into consideration when you do, do combat mods and so on. I kind of like the idea about doing more damage against a character with crosshairs. Which means you've got more chance of taking him out. Thus effectively activating that crosshairs. And then obviously decapping the character. Now the second half I'm not sure how that part's going to work. The issue I think is potentially if they don't have crosshairs. And you do the 500% damage but you take them out. Will the crosshairs be applied? Sometimes the order of operations can be a little bit strange. And I think it could be running into an issue there. We'll have to test that out. But generally speaking, this will just do extra damage against characters with crosshairs. Target those characters. Get better damage. Decap those characters if you can. Now for the tests on Philip Blake, I will be using a 45% attack 1535 weapon. Because he does not have an attached weapon. This is just to give you an indication. And we are going to rush someone who does not have crosshairs. I want to see, does the crosshairs get applied to the character if I take them out? The Adrenaline Rush comes in. And I don't think the crosshairs is going to get applied. This is obviously an issue. It would be kind of nice if potentially the crosshairs could get applied to another character instead. I think this is going to be very problematic in terms of being able to sort this out when it comes to order of operations. But I will say, in Philip Blake's kit... There is a large opportunity for characters to be crosshaired, so you'd actively have to make the choice not to attack someone with crosshairs, generally speaking. You can, of course, bring in other characters that apply crosshairs as well, of which there are a couple that are pretty decent right now. Now, going straight into the upgrades on this Adrenaline Rush, you can see at Grade 3, it gets plus 200% damage, so it goes from 300% up to 500%. And then at grade 5, you're going to get an upgrade where there's going to be 500% damage if that enemy has crosshairs. That's going to come in. If the character has crosshairs, you'll do effectively double damage. And then at limit break 2, you get an upgrade where if the enemy does not have crosshairs, that enemy gets crosshairs for 3 turns. Like I say, that generally is only going to apply if you don't take the character out. Focus characters with crosshairs as a priority just so you do extra damage. Generally speaking, that's the best way to do things. Now, like I said in the intro of the Adrenaline Rush, he can't proc weapons with this, so he can bypass things like Absolute Defense. The damage that he's going to deal can be reduced by defense rating, though, so you are going to have to amplify his damage heavily. He is an attack leader, 
So he is going to be potentially surrounded by a lot of 1535 characters. Potentially could hold the very nice weapon that is in the um, the bit shot where it gives 20% attack to him and adjacent characters as an alert leader. That could be very nice. So you could boost this adrenaline rush quite a bit. Now he has got some other small amplifiers in his kit. Not just for him, but for other people. That's in the passives, which we will get onto a little later in the video. But first, we'll check out the signature move. And that signature move is called Made to Suffer. It has got an initial cooldown of turn one, cooldown of two turns, number of uses unlimited. Remove 90% of the target's current bonus HP and apply bonus HP block for two turns. Attack the enemy for 400% damage, plus 400% damage if that enemy has bonus HP. So the order of operations here is good. Let's say someone has 100,000 base HP and 100,000 bonus HP. They should now have 100,000 base HP and 10,000 bonus HP once you do this adrenaline rush. Then the block will come in, which will stop potentially any um, overheal or something based on being attacked or any situation where it actually doing damage to the character could potentially heal them with bonus HP or overheal in some way. And then the attack will come in afterwards, which gets a bonus from bonus HP being on the character. So perfect in terms of just dealing damage to a character with bonus HP. If a character has even just 10 bonus HP, they'll get reduced to one bonus HP and this will still do an extra 400% damage. Now this signature move, I believe can crit because it does say attack that enemy for 400% damage. I will test it out a little bit just to make sure, but generally speaking, that does mean this can hit a crit attack. It does mean it can proc weapons, but obviously you can get amplifiers from your combat mods when it comes to modifiers like crit multiplier so on and so forth just to get that added damage on top and this is pretty heavy hitting off of turn one so not too bad at all okay so i did test it out a little bit and it definitely can crit so it has the crit potential on the signature so you've got to make a choice whether you want to go with crit set or attack set or you could go for a mix you could go for attack set and crit multiplier mod in the bottom left hand corner this is a character that can take you know effect of of both of the heavy stats and the crit multiplier. We're gonna attack the character with that little bit of defense down here. And we are gonna use the signature move. He has got 100% bonus HP. You'll have to just watch his bonus HP go down to 10% and then he'll probably get nuked. Just just so we're clear, uh, just, just, just keep an eye on it. There we go, it goes down to about 10%. Then he gets nuked and uh, like I said, he did get crit damage so obviously this can crit just confirmation and it did do amplified damage because the character had bonus hp and that's how it works pretty much as simple as that now you might not have seen it but it did do bonus hp block as well but once the character is taken out then all of those debuffs go away kind of like confuse goes away taunt goes away so on and so forth if we look at the upgrades you can see plus 40 percent Bonus HP removal comes in at grade two. So initially it is a 50% bonus HP removal. Then at grade four, an upgrade comes in where the target gets bonus HP block for two turns. And at limit break one, it gets an upgrade where there's a plus 400% damage if the enemy has bonus HP. And then at limit break three, as if we should be surprised, it gets minus one to starting cooldown. So it goes from a two turn starting cooldown down to a one turn starting cooldown this is obviously quite important if you want to do damage as early as possible in the fight so generally speaking you will need to get this character to lb3 to use them as more of a damage dealer within your attack team at least on that initial first turn anyway uh, we do get a lot of this when it comes to the signature moves but there is potential that this character could be good just for let's say a couple of copies because he is a an actual leader but obviously his damage will fall off. He won't be able to do it as early and he'll lose stats. So obviously you've got to make that choice. But yeah, like I say, LB3 for maxing out the character's potential for the early nuke damage. And it has got pretty good nuke potential, not just because he gets the bonus from bonus HP, but that this can crit is actually pretty decent. He is going to be able to get some massive amplifiers in there with the combat mods. Is it worth going with a crit set just to hit this signature move it could be it could be generally speaking you know especially if it's turn one you're getting a lot of uh a lot of early damage off here his adrenaline rush potentially you could see is not being that 
you know, amazing when it comes to the potential damage. You know, it's flat damage, no crit potential. This can crit, so it can potentially hit a lot harder than the Adrenaline Rush. And of course, you can do it off turn one. It's just obviously if the character has bonus HP, which a lot do right now. So yeah, very nice signature move. Amplified damage against characters with bonus HP. Can crit, that means it can prop weapons, be it the defense team weapons, but also the weapons in Philip Blake's hands as well. Now, Philip Blake is going to be an advanced token wheel character. That does mean we're going to be giving away some advanced tokens. 10,000 advanced tokens to one lucky winner. And all you have to do is type in the comments down below the name of the new allegiance that is going to be coming to the game, which is going to be Lone Wolves, which Philip Blake potentially is going to be the leader of. Once you get a look at his mythic abilities, you'll know that there is definitely some more Lone Wolves on the way. Make your entry as part of a sentence. Make sure you do it in the comments and not the live chat. Best of luck if you enter. Now back to the video. Now taking a look at Philip Blake's mythic abilities, these are his passive skills. He is a control role character. This means that he gets precision where enemy resistances are 40% lower against this fighter. This means any sort of control or effect that he will actually put on an enemy lowers the resistances that are inbuilt into the character's kit or on their combat mods by 40% a flat rate. The next one is called Pack Sense. At the start of each wave, a random enemy gets minus 15% defense for each Lone Wolves Allegiance teammate for two turns. You saw this actually proccing in previous clips and it was just minus 15% because right now, Philip Blake is the only character in the Lone Wolves. But if there are three characters, that means someone's getting at minus 45% defense. This is actually pretty big because defense teams can be really, really tanky. And obviously percentage attack teams need as much help as you can get. Percentage damage is pretty tough. So defense down obviously just amplifies the potential damage. This is going to work with Philip Blake's signature move, his rush. But it's also going to work with any of his teammates' signature moves and rushes. So that's obviously great. The next passive is called Blank Slate. At the start of each turn, 100% chance to remove all positive effects from a random enemy. This is obviously great. There are some pretty massive positive effects out there. And I'm thinking about just like halos and um, decat resistance and camouflage. This is going to help in terms of not having your damage blocked to certain lines, for instance. And making sure if you do decap a character, they actually stay down, which is obviously nice as well. The last passive is called Intimidation. At the start of each wave, all Lone Wolves Allegiance teammates get 100% counter damage reduction for three turns. This means that Philip Blake himself will always get 100% counter damage reduction by himself, but every Lone Wolf character that joins his team will also get it. This will work with their attacks and obviously any teammates' attacks. So if you did eventually get a full team of Lone Wolves, you would effectively have the leader skill of Gold Mythic Maggie, the newly released Anniversary Ultra character, which is pretty nice because I think a lot of people would have probably got used to that kind of nice power when it comes to attacking. So you're not going to lose out on that with a Lone Wolves attack team. Now, as we start the fight, you can see we did actually fully cleanse one of the characters on the enemy team, and it was Wang Fu. In this case, that's actually pretty nice. He starts off with a 100% defense bonus, so he effectively did remove that. We also obviously removed the burn bleed resist that he gets. This is going to work effectively on turn two, where I could potentially remove all of the buffs that Noor's going to get when she does her signature move and gets, um, I think it is Halo and and so on and so forth. Now, I'm going to nuke this character with Philip Blake. He's not going to get any counter damage because obviously he's got 100% counter damage reduction, as you can see in the top left-hand corner. Some of my teammates will because they haven't got counter damage reduction. They are not lone walls. This is how it's going to work. Now, you can see we have the character have minus 15% defense. So that I will do a little bit more damage because of that. No matter what I would have done before, it will do slightly more. The more lone walls I have, the higher this defense down will be, the higher you know boost I'll get when it comes to the amount of damage I'll do. So I'll do the damage. We'll hit him. And I, as you can see, two of my characters got taken out because they don't have the counter damage reduction. But Philip Blake is sitting pretty. So as long as you've got him surrounded by other lone walls, you'll take full advantage of this passive. 
Now jumping straight into the upgrades, you can see at grade 1 it gets the first half of pack sense at the start of each wave. A random enemy gets 7.5% defense down for each Lone Wolves Allegiance teammate for two turns. Then at grade 2 it gets the first half of precision where there's 20% lower resistances against this character. At grade 3 he gets the second half of pack sense where at the start of each wave another 7.5% defense down for each lone wolves allegiance teammate for two turns making it 15% total and obviously it's stacked so if you have three lone wolves characters it would be minus 45% defense up to minus 75% defense down which is going to be absolutely crazy if we move on to grade four we're getting the first half of blank slate at the start of each wave 50% chance to remove all positive effects from a random enemy and at grade 5, the first half of Intimidation, where all Lone Wolves characters get 50% counter damage reduction for 3 turns. If we move into the Limit Breaks, we obviously get Precision 2 coming at Limit Break 1, where there'll be a 20% lower resistances against this character, stacking with Precision 1, making it 40% total. Limit Break 2 comes in, Blank Slate 2 comes in making a 100% chance to remove all positive effects from a random enemy. This is nice. It's obviously going to be at the beginning of each turn. So if it lasts for three turns, you're going to either consistently cleanse the correct character, someone who just gives himself defense, for instance, or someone who buffs himself off turn one. Very nice. And then at limit break three, Intimidation 2 comes in, making a 100% counter damage reduction for all Lone Wolves Allegiance members. Now, I will say just off the cuff, Precision 2 doesn't seem to be doing too much right now. All it's going to do is, I think, allow him to add the crosshairs on the Adrenaline Rush if the character does not have crosshairs already and they don't get taken out. Plus, I think it has a better chance to land the bonus HP block where he does his signature move and he actually adds bonus HP block. Now, there isn't any resistances against this, but there potentially could be just some general resistances from someone's like specialist skill or so on and so forth. So it isn't too much so far in the main kit, but I will say there is obviously a little bit of an added when it comes to his leader skill, which we will check out in just a second. But I think his passives are pretty nice. The counter reduction is going to be great. You just have to have a very heavy lone walls attack team. But you could potentially obviously throw in a character that you know gives himself, let's say, a guardian shield, and it would kind of work to the same extent. So there might be a character out there that kind of does that. Someone like Easter Eva style, but maybe not Easter Eva herself, just to mention. So yeah, nice passives, work with his kit, and are going to boost hit the allegiance that he is going to be the leader of by the looks of things. But it isn't just that allegiance that he can be the leader of, it is actually specific traits where all alert and strong teammates get 45% attack at the start of each wave, three enemies get crosshairs for three turns. Now, that's going to have an extra 40% chance to land. If someone has 100% crosshair resistance because they have it in their kit or a buff, for instance, from Davy Lead, this can bypass that buff. Um, just to note, obviously he gets bonuses for adrenaline rushing against characters with crosshairs, and this is where he can add quite a lot of crosshairs for quite a lot of turns. By the time his adrenaline rush comes up, he should have an enemy to attack with crosshairs on them. And potentially, who knows, there could be more crosshairs coming in the Lone Wolves team. We'll have to wait and see. But the 45% attack lead is very high, especially for like what is effectively a generic leader. He isn't giving it specifically to an allegiance. He's just giving it to strong and alert characters. But maybe this is a teaser. It doesn't always work this way of what traits the other Lone Wolves potentially could be. Because it would be pretty strange if attack characters were coming onto a team of a lone wolves character where they're getting synergy from the passives but they're not getting any bonuses from the actual leader skill we have had that in the past so we'll have to wait and see but potentially there's going to be some strong and alert characters on the way when it comes to the lone wolves attack team now philip blake does not have an attached weapon although he does have the picture of a weapon in his hands on the left hand side so maybe a future battle pass league store or some sort of promotional weapon will be released but you can put whatever weapon you want in his hands i did say the bit shot weapon could work quite well in his hands because it just gives quite a large amount of attack but you won't get any crit bonus there so you want to have to obviously work out whether you need crit for your team because he does obviously buff the most people he buffs himself plus the four adjacent teammates that are completely surrounding him so his weapon when it comes to what he does for his teammates is very important 
because he doesn't need kind of like a boost for himself as much he's more of a like a support character as much as a control role his job in the team isn't necessarily to be that big damage dealer you're going to be relying on other characters to do that for the attack team that he's going to be in but he's going to be putting down crosshairs he's going to be bringing down the bonus hp and he's going to be cleansing enemies putting defense down so like i said a little bit more of a support role within that attack team and i personally i prefer attack leaders to not be damage dealers because they don't get specialist skills so they generally lose out on what is one of the most powerful parts of an attack character's kit so this was gold mythic philip blake and he is going to be coming to the game like i said as an advanced token wheel character and he looks pretty good as an attack leader there's no doubt going to be a handful of more lone wolves characters coming to the game it'll be interesting to know what kind of characters though potentially could be but i think we've had a teaser at least one as we have got a Martinez in the background of Philip Blake. But it doesn't necessarily mean that Martinez is on the way. But there is some potential there. So like I say, we'll have to wait and see. Do tell me what you think about Philip Blake as an attack leader. Has he got the potential for you? Who do you think the Lone Wars characters could be? What kind of synergy do you think this team's going to have? It looks pretty decent as a foundation just off of one character. We need some heavy damage and potentially another support character in there to really get things rolling. Time will tell. I'm sure we'll find out very soon. Like I said, if you have any thoughts on this character in the comments down below, I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.